Japanese company SoftBank said today they plan to sell humanoid robots to consumers starting in February. Their $1,900 robot product called Pepper will be able to work as a babysitter, nurse, and emergency medical worker, and will also be able to respond to human emotions, according to SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Sun. Lance Ulanoff is editor-at-large at Mashable, and he's here to tell us about Pepper. Welcome, Lance. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so Peppers, uh, you know, I, I love I love the, the idea that more companies are getting into robotics, and apparently, uh, uh, you know, SoftBank had made their intentions clear uh, probably a four, three or four years ago that they wanted to get into this. They partnered with a um, company called, I believe it's Aldebaran. I can never quite say the name. They didn't build this on their own. It was a company that has been building smaller uh, humanoid. Yes, there it is, Aldebaran. Uh, companies that's been building smaller uh, humanoid robots for a while, actually, uh, that were educational, mostly demonstration. But this is very clearly intended to be a consumer-level robot. And the problem with a lot of humanoid robots we've seen thus far, including Honda Asimo, is that they never make it to market. Uh, I just saw uh, earlier this year an incredible demonstration by the bipedal Asimo who was walking around, and yet they still couldn't tell me when, if ever, it would come into users' homes, and it would probably cost a whole lot more money than this. If this really ends up being $2,000, that would be incredible. Um, by the way, I'm kind of skeptical of that, knowing what I know about what it takes to build uh, robotics at this level and the ability that this has to move in the way it does and how we can recognize it has a lot of sensors in the hand, in the head. Uh, it has facial recognition, voice recognition. It's cloud uh, connected. Uh, it's got, you know, obviously artificial intelligence that's both in the cloud and local. It, it, it do does a whole lot of stuff that is Typically, a lot more than $2,000. And by the way, what you can't quite see there is it's about four feet tall, weighs about 60 pounds. Uh, you know, I I hope that they can really do it. I mean, even look at the hands. The hands are so articulate. Uh, you know, it's extremely exciting to see something like this. Uh, but I think everybody should take it with a grain of salt. Mashiosi Shan is a, a really interesting guy. He tends to be somewhat bombastic, kind of funny. Uh, speaks off the cuff. I know he was very excited to roll this out there, but, you know, let's talk in 2015 and see if these things at least appear for consumers in Japan, which, by the way, Japan is always leading in robotics. Why? That population is aging faster than ours, and they need home health health care workers more than we do, although we, we will catch up. It looks like right now the robot is demonstrating how it can rip the heart out of somebody's body and crush it with its uh, robot hand. Now, it, it, you, you mentioned that Japan is ahead in humanoid robots, uh, and that's what, makes it, <laughs> that's what makes it so – it shows off to a bad start. Uh, that's what makes it so astonishing that, that the company is going with a French – you know, the, the company um, uh, is a French company. So it's a, a Japanese company that's going to be selling a, a French – humanoid robot. Now, uh, Lance, you're a parent. Uh, Elise, who? You're a parent. I'm a parent. Would any of us trust this thing to babysit children? <laughs> no. No, not, not, not yet. Now, right now, you know, I have t teenagers now, so I'd be glad to leave it at home, you know, <laughs> so right. we can just sort of say no parties, no drinking. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, to actually take care of a small child that I care about, uh, um, not yet. By the way, we don't even know how much weight it can hold, you know, because you have yeah. to be able to lift something if you have to a uh, 20 pound baby. Yeah. Between this robot right. taking care of your kid and then the Google uh, driverless cars uh, that can take them, you know, to and from school and stuff. Man, what are parents going to do in the future? <laughs> I think gonna, it's like, wonderful. Live, up, live off the fat of the land, I guess. We're going to build robots. <laughs> Actually, what that sounds pretty good. What? Yeah, what if I reverse it and have my robot or have my kids take care of the robot because I'm like because the robot becomes more precious? Yeah, exactly. No kidding. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. It is kind of adorable. You, what you didn't hear there is the sounds that it makes. It doesn't say words, but it makes these childlike sounds. Uh, when, when it's holding that heart, by the way, it's oh, yeah, it's like making all these weird noises. You know, although I do think it would have been hysterical if it had actually ripped someone's heart out and that's what it was holding. <laughs> now, uh, speaking of, of, of the heart, uh, they say, uh, Sun says actually, that it's going to be affectionate. It'll respond to human emotion and it has something called an emotional engine. Uh, right. What What is that about exactly? I mean, it'll actually read the emotions on people and what it'll, if, it, if, you're, if you're sad, it'll give you a hug or something? Well, it'll, so it, it uses facial recognition to tell the, tell the difference between a smile and a frown. 
uh, vocal, you know, intonation to tell if you're happy or sad, depending on how your voice sounds. Uh, it'll have some of this local, but it will use what it learns and use the cloud to get smarter. And one of the examples that they talk about is uh, reading your child a book. And then after the fact, telling you, your child smiled while I was reading the book to him. And so, you know, you get, oh, so it enjoyed this as opposed to screaming in terror because a robot is reading you a book. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it's the, the thing about robots, especially humanoid robots, is the uncanny valley where something looks too close to human, but not quite. Like humans are very perceptive about something being off, and that's why sure. they're freaked out by robots. So the movements of this robot in particular, you see it's very fluid, and that's where people start to go, that's a little weird. But if it can respond to you in a way that is more human, like at an emotional level, you may feel more comfortable. By the way, Honda Asimo had done something similar, although it's less autonomous. They pre-programmed in, for example, if it was serving a table full of people, People, instead of just jumping up and plopping cups down, it would actually stop, greet everyone individually, and then put the cups down. So, you know, this idea of trying to make robots not just look more human, but act in that humans can digest is, is a larger trend.